go do a little run back to the Old Testament because this is one of my favorite passages. But it's also the passage that was basically quoted in the New Testament passage, so it all ties together. So our passage for this morning is from the book of Isaiah, the chap ninth chapter, the first four verses. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy of harvest as people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Thanks be to God for this word to us. I would like to have you imagine yourself in a black room. Think the room under the staircase, or perhaps better, because we need a little space here, imagine yourself in a basement of a large apartment building or a large office building, in a basement that has absolutely no windows and the lights have gone out, and it is absolutely pitch dark. Or better yet, imagine yourself out in a huge field. On one of those nights, where the moon is not shining, perhaps there are clouds, and the stars cannot get through. And you stand there in absolute darkness, with no sense at all except for a little bit of feeling through your shoes of what is under your feet. You got it? Okay, we're all there, standing in this darkness. And it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit ominous. And then all of a sudden, boom, a gorgeous fireworks explodes overhead. It's magnificently beautiful. And everybody standing in the field looks up at the firework and they go, ooh, ah. Right? You've heard that. Fourth of July up at the lake. That is perhaps how it was oh so long ago at the beginning of time when there was no light, when the entire universe was black. I can almost imagine God, thinking anthropomorphically here, God sitting there in that black dark universe looking around at the whole world, at the darkness, hearing the brooding silence. And then I imagine God speaking in the darkness, speaking out of creative richness, and suddenly, boom, there is an explosion of light and sparkles, and God goes, whoa. All those little sparkles stop in the sky and become stars. And when God sees the scars, God says, oh, that's, that's beautiful. Good job, me. And then God makes the sun and the moon and there is light in the world. And God says, it is good. One of the things that we believe is that God is all about light. Think of that as you will, for there are all kinds of light, right? There is the sun the moon, the lights that we turn on in our homes. There is the light that comes on in our heads when suddenly we get this idea that's really exciting and cool. There's the light that comes on when we fall in love. There is the light that comes on when we see a newborn child or grandchild. God is about light. In fact, God is light. 1 John chapter 1, right? God is light. In God there is light. No darkness. I often wonder why we try to infuse God with darkness. Pretend that God encourages, perhaps even participates in, the acts of darkness such as hate and prejudice and exclusion and punishment. Whatever darkness comes out of the religions of the world, and there is darkness at times, even coming out of Christianity, 
It comes from us. Because we create God in our image. We endow God with our fears and our prejudices and our hate. But God is not about those things. God is not about darkness. God is light. And we, we are children of God. Which can only mean this. We were created to love the light. That is part of the original blessing that we are born with. The love of the light. Why do we love the sunrise? Why do we so rejoice when all of a sudden the skyline bursts open in oranges and reds? And the sun begins to stream through the trees. Why do our hearts lift when the days get longer? And kind of sink as winter slowly eats away at the amount of light that we experience each day. It's because we are creatures of light. Those moments connect us in some way, I think, to our spiritual center, to our spiritual home. Now, it's not that we can't also end up in the darkness. That seems, unfortunately, very clear. We can. The fact is, our souls can get twisted. And we can get caught up in the way of the world. And the image of God in us, that light part, can get dimmed and shrunken. And so sometimes we end up as people lingering in dark places. When I think about this fact, I always think of J.R.R. Tolkien's book, The Lord of the Rings, and, and, its, and its predecessor, The Hobbit. In that book, there is a character by the name of Smeagol. Anybody know who Smeagol is? Well, Smeagol was a hobbit. Now, hobbits were basically gentle, kind creatures. They were farmers. Um, they, they, were, they, were, they were happy happy people. But this Smeagol has found a ring. A very powerful ring. Forged, it turns out, in the hot fires of Mount Doom. And this ring has strange and miraculous powers. Unfortunately, those powers are evil. And so this ring leads to a thirst for power and it transforms the person who has it into something that is dark and destructive. It draws those who possess it into a world of brutality and ugliness. And Smeagol has been transformed and captured by this ring. And he's been turned into a pale, grotesque burrower who lives in the darkness under the earth and gnaws raw things. He has been transformed from Smeagol into Golem. His name coming from the sound that he makes as he swallows the raw fish that he has caught. He has become a thing of horror. It's all too easy, it appears, to be transformed by darkness. All too easy to get into that place where we worship power and we worship wealth. It's all too easy to get into the houses of fear and hate and live there. And if we don't think it's easy, all we have to do is look around us. Look around us at what's happening in our world. Look around us at what's happening in our nation. And look around our own inner self. And notice what's happening in us in these times. We know that we have been pulled into the realm of darkness when we rejoice at the failure of another. We know we have been pulled into that place when we choose to exclude people from the circle of God's grace. We know this has happened when we judge others as less than we are. We know that it has happened when we see others as perverted and without value. We know it has happened when we admire the gross accumulation of wealth and stop working for economic equity. We know it has happened when we not only have power and worship power, but abuse power to get what we want. We know this has happened when we seek to make others less so we can be more. We know what it looks like. We definitely know what it looks like in others. Although we sometimes have trouble seeing what it looks like in ourselves. Some would say that right now we are in a period of darkness. One of those periods that's profoundly strong. That we are in a time marked by hate and fear and greed and division. 
in a time when those in power are all too willing to use it and abuse it, a time where equity is threatened, a time where people don't feel safe, a time where justice is elusive and compassion seems thin. And perhaps that is true. But perhaps it is always true. But here's the thing. Because we are made in the image of God and God is light, because we carry God, we can be light in a time of darkness. We can be conduits of sacred presence. We can not only love the light, we can not only carry the light, we can live the light. How many of you remember back when George H. W. Bush became president? In his inaugural address, he gave America a challenge that I actually love. Here's what he said. Some of you will know this immediately. I have spoken of a thousand points of light. Remember that? I have spoken of a thousand points of light, of all the community organizations that are spread like stars throughout the nation doing good. We will work hand in hand, encouraging, sometimes leading, sometimes being led, rewarding. We will work on this in the White House, in cabinet agencies. I will go to the people and the programs that are the brighter points of light, and I will ask every member of my government to be involved. The old ideas are new again because they are not old. They are timeless. Duty Sacrifice, commitment, and a patriotism that finds its expression in taking part and pitching in. Points of light. That's cool. But let's ramp it up. And this time when there seems to be so much darkness, so much of a sense of hopelessness, let's ramp it up. Forget points of light. We're going to have explosions of light. Let's think fireworks. We are to be points of light. We are to be explosions of light in the darkness, even when the darkness is lingering, even when the darkness seems to be winning. And that's clearly the, pas the message of Isaiah from today's passage. Now, we heard today in t the passage we read from a section that is at the beginning of Isaiah, but there's another section almost exactly like it toward the end of Isaiah, where the a person called Third Isaiah, Isaiah number three, there appear to have been three authors. Third Isaiah picks up the theme from the first Isaiah and starts to build on it and expand it. Now the setting of the third book of Isaiah is interesting because it's a moment of darkness in the life of Israel. The people of Israel had just gotten back from Babylon. They had just gotten back from basically prisoner of war camps, from exile. And they'd gotten back to the promised land and back to Jerusalem back to their farms and houses after many, many decades of exile. Now, you would think that would be great, but it wasn't because the land had gone downhill. Many of their farms, many of their homes were, were in rubble, gutted by the war that had happened before they left. The places that weren't in horrible shape had been taken over by other people who didn't want to leave, didn't want to give up the land that they now had farmed and taken care of for decades. So when they got back, it was pretty tough. On top of that, the big cities were basically in ruins. The economic system was in ruins. And the worship of God was in ruins. The temple had been destroyed, and they had begun the process at the very beginning of the return, began the process of rebuilding the temple, but honestly, they were a long way off from having everything put back together. And worship was in disarray. And to top it all off, the government was terrible. There was no leadership, basically. So in this time, the people of Israel were faced with all kinds of disasters. They were fragmented. They were at odds with one another. Uh, it was a dark, dark time. Not a good time. And in the midst of that dark situation, the, the Isaiah prophet wrote, and here's what he, what he wrote, picking up off of the theme that we heard from Isaiah 9. Those of you who walk in darkness, rise, shine, get up, get going. Your light has already come. God's light is already shining upon you. And then he says to them, lift up your heads. I love that line. Those of you that have your chins down, you can just picture it, right? 
Oh, poor me. Those of you that have your chins down, lift them up. Those of you who have closed your eyes, open them up. Those of you who are wallowing in your feelings of hopelessness and helplessness, wake up and get up. Your light has already come. Lift up your heads. Live like you're standing in the light. Live as if the light of God flows through you. Be explosions of light. That's what he's saying. Now this does not look like anger. This does not look like fear. This does not look like alienation, negativity, despair. This does not look like fighting with everybody else because they don't believe exactly the way that you do. This looks like confidence. It looks like hope. It looks like determination. It looks like action. It looks like getting involved in the community center. It looks like getting involved in the Grange, in Seroptimus, volunteering at the food bank, working to support the local school foundations. It looks like found, uh, volunteering to serve in the hospital auxiliary and teaching kids to work, read, and developing a community garden. And it looks like, yes, being a political activist and marching for women's rights and for health care and all the other things that seem to be at risk. 310 people showed up in Joseph yesterday to say, we want to make sure that the vulnerable people in our country are taken care of. That's really cool. It looks like helping out at safe harbors. It looks like mentoring youth. It looks like donations to build water systems in Mexico and bringing toothpaste and other goods here so that we can put care packages together for the food bank. And it looks like food, going to the food bank. It looks like getting engaged in the issues you care about. And I don't care which side of center you live, left or right. It looks like getting engaged around the issues you care about. It looks like treating a person with mental health issues with dignity. It looks like receiving a person whose color or creed or language is different from yours with hospitality. It mean, looks like making sure that everyone, absolutely everyone, no matter who they are, is welcome, truly welcome in your church. It looks like compassion. It looks like kindness. It looks like listening ears. It looks like helping hands. This is our moment, oh people of God. This is our moment. Things may feel dark and scary, but we cannot sag. We cannot fall into despair. We cannot hang our heads. We cannot quit. Remember, the darkness it gets, the darker it gets, the more power the light has. This is our moment. So get up. Rise, shine, get going. Your light has already come. God's light is already shining on you. This is our moment as the people of God to shine. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your light. We thank you that because we are the carriers of the Spirit, your light is within us. And we pray that you would help us to be people of light, people who allow your presence and your power to shine through them in such a way that people are touched and given hope and healed and fed and clothed and so many other things. This is our moment. Help us to take advantage of it. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen.